Back today, what we're going to do in this video is talk about the 45 45 90 special right triangles. Okay, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to talk about just a just two examples of solving for either the hypotenuse or one of the legs of a 45 45 90 triangle. Okay, with these right triangles, there's a special pattern that kind of happens, and here in the bottom right corner, I've kind of provided a picture uh, of kind of in general what they do. So for a 45 45 90 triangle, the legs are going to be the same. So technically, this is also a isosceles triangle, a little extra fact there, to get from the leg to the hypotenuse of this 45, 45, 90 triangle, uh, what you have to do is simply just multiply by the square root of 2. Okay? And then to get back, if you know what the hypotenuse is, to get back to one of the sides, all you have to do is divide by the square root of 2. Okay? So it's actually a pretty simple, straightforward process to find all these different sides of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Again, we call these special right triangles because um, they, there's a certain pattern that happens with them. Okay, so for this example, what you have to do uh, with these special right triangles is, first of all, you have to identify what kind of triangle it is. Well, obviously, it's a 45. This angle up here would be 45, 90 triangle. Okay? And then what you have to do is identify what you're looking for. In this case, we are looking for the hypotenuse of one of these sides. So what I have to do is I have to go from the leg to the hypotenuse okay, of this right triangle. So if I look at my little diagram here, if I go from a leg to the hypotenuse, all I have to do is just multiply by the square root of 2. Okay? So in this case, this, this one's actually pretty easy to find. X in this case is going to be equal to 8 root 2. Okay? I take 8 and take it times the square root of 2 to get to the hypotenuse. Now, 8 times the square root of 2, if I can grab a handy-dandy calculator real quick, 8 times the square root of 2 is going to be about, okay, in a little bit decimal here, about 11.3137. Now, there's more decimals after that, that kind of thing. Okay, but what that does tell us is that uh, the hypotenuse is always supposed to be the longest side of a right triangle, and in this, in this case, 11.3 is bigger than 8, so we know we did that correctly. All right. Um, also, the directions here, find the value of x, give your answer in simplest radical form. That's why I circled this one, is because 8 times the square root of 2, that is simplest radical form. This right here, this decimal, is definitely not radical form, so we, we would not include that in our answer. Okay, so that's a pretty simple um, first example. The second example, okay, same directions. Find the value of x, give your answer in simplest radical form. So here is our second triangle, our second example here. In this case, we're going, we, we know what the hypotenuse is, hypotenuse right here, and we're going backwards to one of the legs. Okay, and I've provided the picture down here again. If I go from the hypotenuse of this triangle back to one of the legs, I have to divide by the square root of 2. Now, this one's going to be a little bit tougher because you're dividing by a radical. So in this case, what I have to do is I have to take 5, if I'm going from the hypotenuse back to one of the legs, I have to take 5 and I have to divide by the square root of 2 to get back to where I originally was. Now, that is really confusing. That right there is a number divided by the square root of 2. Well, we don't even know what the square root of 2 is. We're dividing by an infinitely repeating decimal, which is also known, well, also we can call it an irrational number. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what we have to do in this situation is if we want to give our answer in simplest radical form, this is not the simplest, okay? This radical on the bottom is very, very messy. So what we have to do in this case is what we're going to do to get rid of this radical on the bottom, to get rid of that square root of 2 on the bottom. What we're actually going to do is we're going to multiply by the square root of 2 on top and on bottom. Okay. Now, this is what we call, um, this is also another math phrase that we have. It's called rationalizing the denominator. Okay. So what we do here is we're trying to make the bottom part here a rational number. That's why it's called rationalize the denominator. But anyway, um, so to get rid of the square root of 2, multiply both the top and bottom by the square root of 2. These top and bottom, they actually don't multiply. So I'm just going to stick them next to each other. 5 is on the outside, 2 is on the inside. They don't multiply times one another. So just put them right next to each other. On the other hand, on the bottom here, these numbers are actually going to multiply. Okay, Since they're both inside the radical, they do multiply together, so you get the square root of 4. Okay, Now we can do one more step of simplifying. We actually know what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is, in fact, 2. 
Okay, so now, and again, back to that phrase, rationalizing the denominator. The denominator has gone from an irrational number of the square root of 2. Now it is a rational number of 2. It's a much nicer, easier number. Dividing by 2 is much easier than dividing by the square root of 2. Anyway, this, what this means is that my leg is equal to 5 root 2 over 2. Uh, you could also write it as 5 halves root 2. I've also seen it written that way. Either way, that is our answer. That is the leg of the right triangle. Okay, so there's just a couple of examples to help you with um, uh, help you with your 45, 45, 90 special right triangles. All righty, and uh, hopefully this video was helpful for you today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.